Did I hear somebody say it's warm in here? I love that. Turning the air down. <laughs> hey, watch it. Watch it. So for everybody on Zoom, hey, Larry, good to see you. For everybody on Zoom, the, the room is set up in a horseshoe. If you're not in the room, usually. Uh, how's this? There's a 360. I'm going to do a 360 with this table and give everybody an opportunity to see. Now, I've got eight chairs on one side, eight chairs on the other side. It might be 10 and five chairs on the end of the horseshoe. And everybody is sitting on this side of the room over here. If we were an airplane, we'd be flying on our side. Uh, if we were in a boat, we'd be sinking. Uh, and it just happens that I'm looking the other way. So like, I can't see anybody. You guys are also, you might be. Maybe I need to turn around. Everybody on Zoom is dizzy right now. If you see people puking, you know why. <laughs> wow, I'm dizzy. I don't know about you guys, but that made me dizzy. Let's get started. So there's two numbers written behind me. I want you to write these numbers down. Then I want somebody to pull out their calculator. We're going to do some work. In June of 2021 in Broward County, there were 4,200 and 524 homes sold. The numbers are showing up in reverse for all of you on Zoom. I apologize for that. Um, and yeah, I know there's a camera setting and I can fix that and whatever. I'm not gonna stop to do that. So June, 4,524 homes were sold. July through today, and tomorrow's the last day of the month, 3,060. What's your first aha? Sales are down? Sales are down. Oh, they are displaying correctly. Cool. Thank you for that. Just for me, they're backwards. How weird is that? Okay. Uh, Jagoda, am I pronouncing your name correctly? You had your hand up a moment ago. Take yourself up. Oh, oh, yes. I was just saying hello. Good morning. Oh, you're waving. How are you? <laughs> Hi. Okay, I love that. It's uh, it's Yagoda. Just it's J here oh, in this country, that. but so on. Pronounce it again. Yagoda. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you can call me Vivian. It's much easier because. Well, I love Yagoda. <laughs> I want to call you Yagoda. I love that. Okay. Isn't that okay. A beautiful great. Name? You know, John, like the most boring name in the world, it's right? Great. It's easy, though. You don't need to discuss your name for 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. But, you know, 58 years old, I've lived with this name for a long time, and I'm ready for a new name. Let's have a contest. <laughs> Let's uh, rename the team leader. You guys just put in your uh, your your suggestions, and we'll vote on it. Yeah. Kyle, <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> oh, it's funny. It doesn't look like a chase. Chase, I like that. Chase is a race yeah. car driver. I can live with that one. Chase Elliott, you cool. Look like a Bob. Michael Topo says Juan. Yes. I said Juan first. Yes. <laughs> Diane says Juan. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> All right. So calculator subtract three thousand and sixty from four thousand five hundred and twenty-four. Yes, subtract. Get out your calculator. Say it again, please. Okay, so there's 1,464 fewer homes sold in the month of July versus the month of June. Good morning, Kevin. Good to see you, sir. By the way, the, the face masks are optional in here if you want to wear it. Cool. If not, it's okay. Okay. Okay, we're cool. Uh, all right, now I want you to take that, not, that number, 1,464, and divide it by 4,524. Yeah. 32 is right. I heard somebody say it. Yeah. 32. Sales are down 32% in the month of July. Now, 
Can you see that on Facebook or on Zoom? Yeah, you can. Does one month make a shift? No. Say no, it doesn't. Is it a trend? That's Say no. It, yeah. Say no. It, it could be ebb and flow of the market, right? And 32% is a pretty big number. Yeah, it's more than ebb and flow. It's an indication that something is up. I asked yesterday if we have an endless supply of buyers who are ready, willing, and able to pay more than market value, yeah. right? And the answer is no. Eventually, that well's got to run dry. And July might be an indication that it is, correct? So don't panic. Does anybody have a goal of selling more than 3,000 homes a month? Anybody? No, we're cool. Anybody on Zoom? No, we're good. <laughs> so if your goal is to close two sales a month, can you do it when there's 4,524 homes being sold? Say yes. yes. Can you do it when there's 3,060 homes being sold? Say yes. yes. Nothing to worry about. However, there's less for the same number of agents. The pizza guy screwed up and he only delivered one pizza with 10 slices. And there's 10 of us here and we were all planning on getting two slices and now there's 10 and I'm still getting my two. You guys can fight over the rest. It's a conversation about getting your unfair share, not your fair share. Now, guess what book we're in today? Shift. And I want you to go to page 50. Now, raise your hand if you don't have a copy of this book. Yeah. Thank you. I promised you that if you should, is this scratching or is this I don't have a copy? I have a copy and I had an itch. Okay, good. <laughs> it could have been, I'm not sure if I have a copy or not. Okay. Everybody on Zoom, I'm sorry if I can figure out how to push these through the computer and give them to you, I would. Uh, and we're in shift. Cool. Okay. All right. First of all, I want to recap and just what, what page, John? Let's go to page 49. Middle of the page. Just because the market has moved from more to less doesn't necessarily mean you have to. Page 49. Underline it, underline it, underline it. Highlight it, highlight it, highlight it. Just because the market has moved from more to less doesn't necessarily mean you have to. Now, two lines down, you must love Gary Keller. He doesn't say, I recommend, it might be a good idea, you might want to. He says, you must be more rigorous and resolute in your lead generation than ever before. And more so than anyone else. In other words, get your two slices of pizza, let everybody else fight over what's left. Right, Daniel? Daniel says yes. All right, go to page 50. Where there once, where there was once a large quantity and quality of leads, there isn't and the once clear pool feels more like a muddy puddle. Middle of the page, uh, second paragraph. Motives have narrowed significantly and fewer people pass the clear cut motivation test of being able, ready, and willing. Fewer buyers can afford to have the desire to or are prepared to buy now at market prices. All right, moving on to new information. That's a recap from yesterday. Moving on to new information, page 51, move past your myths. Myths are these beliefs that you have in your mind that are holding you back. 
Now, if it's a myth, what does that mean? It's not true. It's not true. The world is flat. Well, that ain't true. But there was a time when we thought it was. Let's face facts. Lead generating to find potential customers just might not be your favorite business subject. You know, I've always been that person in the room who doesn't get that because I love lead generation. You know, when they say, raise your hand if you love lead generation, there's 10,000 people in the room. Like I'm the one person who raises their hand. I love it. And everybody's looking at me like, you're an idiot. <laughs> All right. If you're like most, it probably isn't why you got into real estate and isn't something that gets you excited to go to work every day. Again, not with me, love it. And yes, I'm excited. The truth, however, is that you actually got into two businesses. You got into the helping people with their real estate needs business and you got into the lead generation business. I would tell you, you're in the lead generation business. Forget about real estate. You wanna know what your job description is? It's not selling real estate. Your, just, your job description is to talk to the number of people you need to talk to every day until you've scheduled an appointment and added somebody to your database, period. That's it. That's your job description. If somebody asks you what you do, say, I talk to people every day until I get an appointment and add somebody new to my database. You're going to confuse the hell out of them. They're going to go, what is that? You're going to go, well, I'm actually a real estate agent. I'm glad you asked. I like to keep my friends and family members updated on the market. <laughs> That simply means I send them interesting information on the real estate market twice a month or once a month or yeah, I like twice, twice a month. And I call every three or four months just to check in. Would it be okay if I added you to that group? Script, write it down. The bottom line is that without motivated leads, there are no people to help. Can't sell a house if you don't have a buyer. Can't sell a house if you don't have a listing. Bottom of the page. So Gary's talking about his experience as a real estate agent now. And yes, Gary Keller used to sell real estate. Matter of fact, he used to sell a lot of real estate. And if you know Gary's disc profile, he's a high D, high C, which means his eye is really, really low. The eye is your social part. It's the part about you that makes you like to go to a party, right? It's the part about you that likes, that makes you walk into the party with bright colors and fancy jewelry and you walk in and I'm here, we can start. Yeah. The high C is looking for the back of the room. They're like, my goal is to go to this party and not have to talk to anybody. Yeah, that's Gary. So is Gary a natural lead generator? Say no. Now, a high eye could be natural because they've got the gift of gab, but that doesn't necessarily, sorry, that doesn't necessarily <laughs> mean, ouch, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be good at sales because the gift of gab doesn't necessarily mean that you're achieving your goals. I like dogs, you like dogs, 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 dogs. <laughs> what have you got? Nothing. <laughs> the high C is like, what kind of dog is it? Where did you get it? How old is it? What's your vet bill look like? You know, I've got this other vet that charges 10 cents less. Let me get, okay. High S is, how's your dog? Is it cold? Can I bring you a blanket? <laughs> High D is like, get your dog out of the way. <laughs> All right, how's that for a bunny trail? All right, I must admit that I honestly didn't enjoy or fully embrace the lead generating part of our business at first. It wasn't until I realized that lead generating was something I had to do and master in order to get to the things I really enjoy doing that I actually buckled down and got serious about it. And then something magical happened. The more I did it, the better I got. Underline it, underline it, underline it. Time on task over time equals mastery. The only path to mastery is time on task over time. There is no shortcut. 10,000 hours leads to mastery. And there's no 
shortcut to 10,000 hours. And then something, oh, never mind, we already read that. Okay, second paragraph. From a distance, I thought lead generation was really difficult. But after I diligently applied myself to it for a reasonable length of time, I came to see that it was actually quite easy and could even be fun. I also thought I was going to be too busy and wouldn't have the time to lead generate. So what Gary's doing is he's doing a really good job of talking to you about his myths and removing myths without actually listing them and saying, here's a list of myths. First myth, lead generation is hard. Not true. Second myth, I'm gonna to be too busy to lead generate. Also not true. Too busy doing what? If you don't have somebody that wants to buy a home or sell a home, what are you doing? That's just me, that's not in the book, but I never got that. Too busy doing what? I guess that's where the ready aim, 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 fire thing comes in, right? I'm too busy getting ready to get ready. Getting ready to get ready to do what? All right, sorry. However, as I focused on doing it every day, I discovered it wasn't an issue of having time, but an issue of making time and protecting it. So time block for lead generation and protect that time. Build a bunker around your lead generation. Build a bunker about where you, around where you work in lead generation. If it's your office, if it's a desk, if it's a cubicle, Build a bunker, put a sign on your door that says I'm in lead generation between nine and 12. I will be glad to return any calls after 12 o'clock. Aaron, put a sign on your back. You're at a cubicle that says I'm in lead generation between nine and 12. A hundred percent get a shirt that says that, right? Until your lead generation is done, everything else is a distraction. Write that down. Until lead generation is done, everyone else is a distraction. Now, how do I know when lead generation is done? I've hit my daily standard for conversations and I've booked one appointment and I've added one new person to my database. That's my definition, right? Actually, that's my definition for you. My definition for me is a little bit different. Now, your definition should, should match your goals. In other words, if your definition is I'm going to talk to the number of people that I need to talk to in order to schedule two appointments every day and add two people to my database every day, then good for you. I love it. If it's three and three, again, good for you. I love it. Make it happen. Tony DeSella would tell you, you want to be successful in real estate? Lead generate eight hours a day. There it is. Figure out everything else. When are you going to go on appointments? I don't know. Figure it out. Just get the appointments. The biggest, the, the best thing that can happen for you is you have too many appointments and you don't have time to go on them. That would be cool. You'll figure that out. Okay, then intimidation set in. Another myth. I believed I couldn't lead generate because I didn't know what to do or say and was afraid of making mistakes. Again, that's a high C. High D doesn't care if they make mistakes. Hi C, ready, aim, 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 aim. I don't want to make a mistake. Hi D is like a mistake, big deal, onward. By the way, it's not good or bad, and I'm not making fun of you if you're a high C. That's just, I am making fun of you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, however, as I consistently got after it, I found that lead generation is nothing more than a set of tasks and skills that are well documented. I saw that on top of being a transaction knowledge and service business, our industry is a script and dialogue skill-based business. Shocker, I love that. I had to commit to getting onto the path of mastering these. I discovered that time on the task over time was a simple secret that helped me become very good. Page 53. The gift of gab, sorry, 
The gift of gab should never be mistaken for natural sales skill. It became obvious to me that everyone has to master the specific and meaningful scripts, dialogues, and skills of lead generation to be really successful. Again, pay attention to words, words matter. He didn't say to be mediocre, to be average. He said to be really successful. We are on a journey with a destination that is assured. And that destination is to become a millionaire real estate agent. Now by definition, a millionaire real estate agent is someone who earns a million dollars a year selling real estate. Raise your hand if you don't have a copy of this book. Kevin, see me after class, I'll give you a copy. So time on task over time equals mastery. And, oh, I forgot how to pronounce. Dakota. Yagada. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yagada. I yeah. love that. Yagada, where, what office are you in? Uh, in Aventura. Aventura. Yeah. Come see me next week and I'll give you a copy of The Millionaire Real Estate Agent. You going to be in Aventura? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, in Coral Springs. Yeah. Yeah. You have okay. to drive five hours each way if you want a copy of this. Oh, okay. All right. Awesome. <laughs> it's an exaggeration. It's not really five yeah, hours. Yeah. <laughs> All right. How long did it take you to get here this morning? Half an hour. Gee whiz. I walked that. Actually, I did. Uh -huh. I don't know if you guys know or not, but I walked from Boca to Key West and back. Oh, awesome. Okay. <laughs> it took me 48 weeks. But yes, I did. So I walked. Uh -huh. Through Aventura. You know, when you do that, you really get to know every place. So when everybody talks about some place they've been, I'm like, yeah, I know that place. I walked there. <laughs> <laughs> Why would somebody do that? I don't know. We'll talk about it another day. All right. Bottom of the page. When I was able to connect the dots between effort and results, I had a huge aha. I now, I now saw that what I did on the front end with lead generation got me sales results on the back end. This connection opened my eyes to how effort and success were linked. I became motivated to put in the necessary effort and also began to enjoy it. I knew that when I generated leads, the, the desired results would follow. Middle of the page on page 57. Move from having success to creating success. It's under step two, figure out what works. And don't worry, Monday we'll come, next week we'll come back and talk about this more in depth. I just want you to have this one key quote before we wrap up today. All of us need to move from having success to creating success. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, here's what I mean, guys. When we're in a market, where there's 4,524 homes being sold every month. We can be successful without creating success. We can be successful because the market is hot. And there's a lot of real estate agents in our market who are succeeding because of the market, not because of anything they're doing well. They're just succeeding because the market's that good. When the market moves and it drops, 32% month over month, like it did between June and July here in Broward County. Those are real numbers off broker metrics this morning from Broward County. When the market drops by 32%, we have to move from having success to creating success. We have to get intentional about what we do in order to go out and find business versus waiting for it to come to us because it's gonna stop coming to you. Now, this is not a, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna scare anybody in the room. This is just a get real conversation. 
Look at those numbers and then ask yourself, what would happen if 32% of those sales went away in the next two to three years because of programs like iBuyers? Mm -hmm. Meaning those are deals that are getting done without a real estate agent, right? Right, right? Say right. Yes. So now you've got a market that's down and it's down and the number of homes that are available for you to sell is down even more because the industry is shifting. Reality. Now, should that worry you? Yeah, it should. If you're not in an office where they're having conversations like this. If you're not with a company that has the systems, models, tools, and technology that, and training that Keller Williams does. Now, should it concern you? You on Zoom? No, it shouldn't. Because when you master what we're teaching you and you master the game of lead generation, the cream rises to the top. And in difficult markets, it is a market of mastery. When the market's good, buyers and sellers don't need a real estate agent that is great at their job. They just need a licensed real estate agent. When the market shifts and it becomes difficult, in 2008, we went from a market where 95% of listings were selling. With a listing, it was going to sell. We went from a market where 95% of the listings on the market would, would sell to a market where 25% of the listings would sell. It took 30 days for that to happen. Now, if you're a seller and you know you have a one in four chance of selling your home, are you looking for... Are you a little more careful in looking for the right real estate agent who's going to market your property and understands the market in order to price your property correctly and knows what to do in order to attract the right buyers and get your home sold? 100%. Advantage you. 100%. If I'm, in the, if I'm still in production, and I'm not, but if I was, I would be excited about this. I would be waiting for this day to show up. Like, cool, game time, ready to go. It's really quiet in here. Everybody on Zoom, super quiet. I think half the room wants to go get a drink. All right, take yourself off mute, talk to me. What'd you hear today? Yagada. Yeah, How'd I do? Yeah, hello. Yeah, very good, very good. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it. All right, give me some ahas, guys. Uh, what I got out of it is what's holding me back is myself. Hmm. It's the myth of I'm not going to be good at it, I'm not going to be successful. And it's my internal dialogue. It's nothing that's happening on site. So, Karen, when I was reading that, uh, when we were reading those pages from Shift, and Gary was talking about the myths that held him back, could you see yourself in that conversation? Yeah. Right? That was me. So the good news is, how's Gary Keller doing today? Really good. He's doing okay. <laughs> so that's awesome. That means you have an amazing future in front of you. Nothing can stop you except you. Now that's a choice. Okay. I love it. Yagada, talk to me. Yes, yes, I have a question. Um, okay. Uh, also with lead generation, for example, it is important to have a good presentation and also use the scripts properly. Uh, but what about if you don't have, uh, how important it is to have a business card? I mean, we do have digital business cards. Obviously that's a lot faster to do than um, to exchange numbers and go into that. How important is it to have business cards? Uh, critically important? Okay, uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. I wouldn't go anywhere without a business card in my pocket. Right. So, I mean, when I say anywhere, anywhere, right? Go to the beach, 
I don't know yeah. where you're going to put them, but put them somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. All right. Electronic business cards. All of that is cool. Yeah. Good. Snap face. Chap. Chap. Snap. Whatever it is. <laughs> aha. Give me another aha. Got you, John. Michael. Yeah, I've got a couple of thoughts. Um, you must be more rigorous in lead gen than anyone else in a shifting market. And lead gen efforts equal results. Good job, Michael. Really good job. Thank you. I agree. Uh, to Larry, uh, percentage drop, how does this compare to prior years? Good question, Larry. Uh, and June, July, August is actually seasonally a very busy time of the year. Uh, so we don't expect numbers to go down in July. We expect those numbers to go up. Uh, I will pull this data for you as far as how it compares year over year, but I promise you it's, it's down. Now, last year was a COVID year, so that might be an asterisk year, uh, an exception. Uh, we'll also compare it to 2019. Yeah, I was just looking at it. <clears throat> I was just looking at it uh, with school and people moving and mm -hmm. that type of thing. That it's going to tail down a little bit because they've already made their commitment or done whatever they're doing. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, and 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 you may or may not be right, but I promise you, it's not thirty-two percent. There's right. there's that's a market shift. Now it's just a month. It could be a blip on the radar and things pick back up in August. Uh, I don't think they will. I think we're starting to see a shift in the market, my opinion. John, I've got one more thought or a question yep. here. Um, is it possible that we borrowed buyers and sellers from the future and from the past because of the, the how hot the market has been? Yeah, not only possible, it's a fact. Yeah. So there were people who were buying homes and selling homes uh, two, three, four, five, six months ago that would have bought and sold six months from now, but they 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 bought and sold six months ago in order to take advantage of a hot market. So we were absolutely borrowing buyers and sellers from the future. 100%, Michael, not only possible, it's a fact. Somebody has their hand up. Who is it? Uh, Dagada. Yes, no, that was thumbs up. Oh, thumbs like, up. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, <laughs> love it. All right. All right, uh, announcement, and then it's going to be time to get to work. So Monday and Tuesday, I won't be here. Now, this is a last minute. Let me go, let me get off live on Facebook. This should not go out to the world. Hold on one second, guys. Stop live stream. I should have said goodbye to everybody that was watching us on Facebook. Oops, too late. <laughs> it's still uh, recording, John. Do you want it recorded? No, you don't. <laughs> Thank you for that, Shirley.